Hey guys, today I was out on a little scout, so I wanted to talk about a resource that we might pass up every day and never really think about. That's natural pigments. So stay tuned, and we'll get started. Okay guys, so the bank that I'm on, I'm in a pretty specific type region where I live. And why I say that is, I actually live in the anthracite coal region of Pennsylvania. And this region is special in a sense that it's the only place in the United States that produces anthracite coal, which is considered hard coal. There's a lot of other places to produce bituminous coal, which is soft coal, but we're the only place that has anthracite coal. Now the big coal boom in this area happened all through the 1800s into the early 1900s, but um, it sort of fizzled away. There's still some operations going on here, but the resource that developed from that in my situation being out a lot like this is the fact that of these mounds, like something I'm on right now, this is a lot of waste material from the mines that were just dumped um, back in the 1800s and they're just still here. They haven't gone anywhere because back then there was no regulation as far as um, reclamation or anything like that when a mining operation would happen. So with that comes a lot of materials out of the ground that I normally would not have access to in any other type environment. So when I was walking around today, I got to thinking I'm going to do a quick video on natural pigments. And as you can see, all through here, even just grabbing a handful of stuff, there's all different pigments here mixed in this. It's like a rainbow here, actually. So I'm going to lay out a cloth that I have with me. I'm going to put three different color pigments out, talk about processing a little bit, and um, show you what that's all about. So what I laid out here were three different color pigments that I found on this rock bank that I was just walking around on. We found a yellow pigment, an orange pigment, and a black pigment. And the process to get these pigments broke down is pretty simple. When I'm looking for something that I'm gonna use as a coloring, what I wanna do initially is if I get, for example, this, this rock, I'm gonna look, can I break it down in my fingers? Okay, and as you can see, that crumbles up pretty quick. And then will it break down further to the point that I'm getting a, a dust or a powder from that? Because ultimately, okay, you, you're gonna wanna break it down in a powder form to use that pigment in different methods. So these are just three options like I found. I'm gonna back the camera up. We're gonna talk about just processing quickly and how we'd actually use them. All right guys, so I showed you a close up of the pigments that I found and I showed you them in whole state and in powdered state. And basically to get them in powdered state, number one, I crush them down my fingers a little bit to get smaller pieces. And then all that I'll do is get a flat rock and a round stone and then I just work it and I'll keep working it. And as you can tell, I already did some on here. You start to get a powder and that would be the pigment that you're getting. Now to store that, you can put it in a hollowed out you get a piece of bone that's dried you can keep it in there of course you can put it in any kind of container and keep the pigments for later use so how would you actually use these pigments well there's three ways that I've used them in the past the first is you can mix them with water when I say you mix them with water I mean drops of water at a time until you get a paint like consistency and then you can use it to and that method of course that would be when you're going to use it like that with water it's more just painting on a solid surface if you're trying to decorate something maybe with your shelter to color it, anything like that in a small section, or to write something um, if you're gonna do anything like that. The second method would be to actually mix these pigments with a tallow or bear grease. I did a little bit of research and they said Native Americans use bear grease with pigments as war paints a lot. So that would be an option is to render down your tallow and mix that in and you'll have a colored tallow or grease that you can work on different things. The last method would be to use hide glue, which is a pretty straightforward process. You can look that up. It's just taking rawhide and cooking it down until you get uh, glue from that. You can mix your pigments in with the glue and then you would have basically a latex type paint and that dries like a rubbery type texture. You can reheat it and then you can use that so depending on your material that you would be using, if it was real porous and you knew that the oils were gonna soak in, you can use the tallow and pigments. 
If it was something more like a tanned hide that you wanted just to put a design on the outside, then of course you can use more of the hide glue and pigment because that would be more like a latex paint that's flexible and bends and it's not going to crack. So there's a bunch of different options you can use with this and it's not too hard of a process. You can see I just pick some stuff up off the ground and you can work it down in that real fine pigment powder and then you're pretty much good to go. Okay guys, so that was a quick rundown of natural pigments, some stuff to look for, ways to process them, ways to use them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, thanks guys.